bubble screens, if I have mm -hmm. to work into the way, to your satisfaction, uh -huh. what kind of things have to change for those to be more productive? You know, obviously the blocking on the perimeter has got to change. Um, and then, you know, there's some things that we do uh, offensively to help ourselves with that uh, alignment-wise where the ball's been from. A lot of intricacies that go into that. But the biggest deal is putting guys in position that can block that. You know, size-wise, um, obviously you want speeds, but when it comes to, to blocking the perimeter, you got to have guys that have, have the size to be able to do that. We're in a mismatch with an outside backer on Trevante Starworth. I'm asking him to do something that he can't do. You know, so that's not his fault. Uh, just when we pace, which is how when we're going fast, when you substitute, then they get to substitute, but they hold the, the clock. And so we got caught out there with him a couple of times. So we, we that'll, that'll improve with a whole bunch. Can you just stick Jalen out there? Uh, yeah, Jalen or, you know, usually it's Lutz or some of those guys like the bigger body guys. CJ, Zuma, those are guys that can you know, do that. How excited is uh, Quan about getting a few more snaps? <laughs> Very excited. But Quan is always excited, guys. I, mean, I don't know if you've been around a little bit, but he, and the guys in the room are always trying to settle him down a little bit because he's always excited. The kid loves football. He, I mean, he would do it all day. But unfortunately, you have to put class and, you know, weights and you got other things that go along with that day. But if it was up to him, he'd do football all day. But he's a great kid. Uh, he's very excited. And I tell you, he understands football. You know, he played quarterback, and so that does help him uh, there. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what he's going to do. You know, he is fired up about playing. How's your confidence level with him, not only as a receiver, but in, you know, punt? Oh, I feel really good about my trust. Uh, I trust the kid because he, he works hard, and, uh, you know, you got to trust what you see in practice. You know, I know we can't simulate to be a game, but as close as we can, and uh, he has done phenomenal. And so, um, you know, we've been contemplating putting him back before two returners at the same time because we were confident that he could get it done. Um, you know, he's obviously done well on kickoff return, so that experience helps him a bunch. How impressed have you been with him of how he's handled everything that's gone on? <laughs> I tell you what, to get the hand that was dealt to that kid and for him to uh, you know make straight A's uh, at the end of that semester and he's doing well right now, and then to continue to play and not redshirt, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, the kid has great character, but you know that family they really have supported them, and then obviously the Auburn family you know, has been around them. So uh, I think it, you know, we talked about you know, this is kind of being his refuge for him, you know, and uh, uh, you know he and I discussed it because you know, we we're just talking about my father passing away. And, you know, I, I could tell him the exact time. It was 9:27, you know, September 27 and 4:36. I was 12 on the practice field. And I told him, and he can remember the exact time when he got the phone call. And when you step between those lines, you, you're able to block some of those things out because everybody's equal, everything's, you know, there's no problems, there's no concerns other than what do I do in this next play. And I think that's been his solitude for him, kind of a refuge for him. Talk about Emory and how he's raised his game now that he's kind of the focal point for, for defensive safety. Absolutely. Safeties. No, Emory's done a great job. You know, um, it, I think a lot of his carryover from last year, he, he got to see what great was like. It was like you know working with Darwin and seeing Cam and, and the way he worked and practiced and uh, you know Mario, all those guys that really T Zach all set up good work habits and tempo for that guy. And he bought it. You know he, he sees how important. You know when some guys think you know two yards outside the hash is not a big deal, well it is a big deal in this offense because spacing and timing, all those things make a big difference. And Emory's one of those guys that has a knack for that. But uh, he, he also, you know, he understands the big picture of being on a big stage. When I get a chance to make a play, I have to make that play. Uh, where most people look at that as pressure, he looks at that as an opportunity. And, uh, uh, and, and it's not something you can teach. You know, some guys have that and some guys don't. Emory is ate up with it. And, uh, maybe it's a testament to, you know, growing up in a football family. You know, his dad being a coach, and, I mean, being a, a quarterback and, you know, coaching him as he was growing up. And, you know, his mom being an athlete and sisters, all that. I think a culmination of all those things uh, have helped him be on that big stage and not affect him. If you remember last year, he made a lot of plays. There were some plays that he made on the bubble, you know, against Mississippi State where nobody blocked it. He just made it right. You know, uh, those are the kind of things that he brings to the team. Did you have a new towel before Atlanta? Did you have a new uh, no. Actually, it's been all year. It's been all year. What it's is it? Year. <laughs> it's the TNG. TNG. Yeah, that's been there the whole time. So. Um, it used to be G2G. Yeah, we, yeah. They've switched up every year, but that's been constant this year. Right. And um, it's just tradition never graduates. That's what it stands for. And I want those guys to understand because, again, 
I started out with all the good players being gone. You know, and players leave. You know, tradition does. You know, we want those guys to start building their own. You build your own legacy, play by play, day by day. You, know, you, you take you know, Ryan Smith. You know, that stop on that goal line. Everybody's going to remember that. You know, and that was one tackle that he made. But it, it, again, that'll be something he can tell his grandkids. You know, years from now. And we try to explain that to those guys. You don't want to miss your opportunity because you didn't get lined up. You didn't know your assignment or you didn't play enough. And you miss out on something that could be with you for the rest of your life. You know? And obviously what it does for the team. So that's that's where we are. You know, Young football team, but they're learning. And they, they make it fun. Boy, I love throwing out there coaching these guys. I mean, I, we won last year, but I'm having more fun this year. And that's the honest truth because of the guys, the way they're working, the expectations that they have based off you know, everybody else's that don't think they can do anything. And these guys go out there and go to work every day. And uh, it makes it fun. It really does. It challenges you as a coach, but it makes you fun. It makes it fun. Is that the one towel you got like that? It's like your special towel? You yeah, I make one every year. Iron? I make one every year. Uh-huh. And, um, and I usually give it to some charity at the end of the year to somebody or you know, a family or somebody that is in need of all the fan, whatever it is, whatever's going on. Um, but, you know, for me, again, because of the enthusiasm, I think it becomes contagious. I think everything, you know, that you do, you ought to have passion about. And so the towel is, is obviously something that started with me in high school, and I've kind of carried it everywhere I've been. And nothing changes but the address and the hairline. That's about it. So, <laughs> waistline a little bit. That's grab. I can't do about that. So you get on that sewing machine and make well, that towel. Yeah. Well, I, I actually, I design them and then I, uh, um, I get them made. Sourced year. out. Yeah, I get them made because my sewing is not very good. <laughs> I'm missing buttons on the shirt right now. <laughs> and my wife, she says she's not my maid, so <laughs> I don't work like that in my house. Maybe some of y'all's out there. Mine don't work like that. <laughs> I don't drive the train. I just take the tickets there. I can't collect the ride the train. So.